Hello, welcome to this new chapter. We are going to talk about different types of insurance and how you can incorporate different insurance into your personal financial plan. First, we're going to talk about different types of risk and risk management methods overall. Then we're going to talk about automobile insurance. Next, we're going to talk about homeowners insurance. So starting with your uh, car, and then we're going to move into home. Uh, next, we're going to talk about health insurance, which is a very important uh, consideration and concern for a lot of um, Americans. So we're going to talk about how the Affordable Care Act changed the insurance landscape in America and how to choose the right type of health, health insurance for yourself. Uh, finally, we're going to talk about long-term care and disability insurance and life insurance and how to incorporate that into a personal financial plan. First things first, why do we need insurance? So the purpose of insurance is to provide protection against unexpected bad outcomes. Uh, therefore, insurance is a very important part of an overall financial plan. How can we minimize our risk? So life is full of risk. Um, you can do some risk management on your own. So we can change our personal behavior or environment. Uh, so, for example, you can drive at the speed limit. Uh, you can always wear your seatbelt, buy cars that have airbags, uh, have alarms for your home, have fire and smoke detectors for your home. Those are things that you can change uh, and do to minimize risk. However, risk still exists. So the other option is to buy insurance against risk. Uh, so to purchase insurance, the price you pay is called the risk premium. When you buy an insurance, the most important thing is to understand clearly what are covered and what are not covered. And that is called the coverage of your insurance policy. Uh, the last option, which is not really a management strategy when it comes to risk, is simply accept the risk. And this is means that you are prepared to pay for the bad outcomes. Um, this is totally an acceptable strategy and this is actually uh, a good strategy if the amount involved is small uh, or if you're very wealthy so for example uh, your cell phone do you buy the insurance coverage uh, other things that when you go to buy an uh, um, a electronic device from a store oftentimes they will ask do you want a coverage uh, some of them may sound ridiculous for example I may buy a 20 or 30 dollar pair of uh, headsets and they will ask do you want to buy coverage for your 30 dollar headset for five dollars obviously that is not worth it if I lost my headset or it gets damaged I'll just buy another one um, so that's the example of a small amount uh, or if you're very wealthy then you don't have to worry about the insurance premium. If something bad happens, you'll be able to afford it. Uh, most of us are not in that situation. Uh, so when we talk about risk management, we also need to think about our personal behavior. So in here, once again, behavioral finance can teach us some lessons. Uh, one of them is that people oftentimes don't want to think about negative things. So they don't buy insurance. They just so this is not risk management and not uh, accepting risk, knowing the consequences. This is pretending that bad things will not happen, and that is not a rational response. Uh, the other reason people don't buy insurance is that they don't see the immediate benef benefit; they only see the cost. So again, um, that is not a rational approach. So the question here is not so much do you must you buy insurance is when we look about the look at the risk management strategy we know clearly which of these we are accepting so are we are we accepting the risk knowing the consequences do are we willing to change our behavior to mitigate risk as much as possible or is it uh, the best outcome or the best possible strategy is to buy some form of insurance for individuals, most of us encounter three major types of uh, insurance that uh, in our daily life. Uh, the first is property insurance. Property insurance includes automobile insurance uh, in that uh, for a lot of us, we do not have uh, a choice if we take out a car loan to buy our car. The loan company oftentimes will require automobile insurance. 
Um, the same is true for homeowners insurance. If you buy a house on a mortgage, the mortgage company will require you to take out an insurance. Um, casualty insurance on the, uh, is often part of property insurance policy. Uh, casualty insurance, we'll talk about that uh, in details. In a lot of cases, casualty insurance is required by law when it comes to automobile insurance. Another type of insurance is health insurance. Health insurance uh, provide insurance against health care co costs. Uh, again, in the United States, health care costs can be very high, and people without insurance, uh, in fact, we talked about that earlier in consumer liabilities, that uh, health care costs is one of, or medical debt is one of the main reasons that lead to personal bankruptcy and financial distress. In addition to health insurance and other type of insurance that is related to our body and our health are uh, long-term disability and long-term care insurance. Finally, there is life insurance that is insurance um, that will pay off when someone dies. So we'll go over all these different types of insurance um, in this chapter. So let's take a look at why we buy insurance. So we're going to look at uh, what are common events and what insurance will allow us to address those events and those outcomes. So for example, you damage your car in an accident. So this is your own car and or you hurt someone in a car insurance uh, in a car accident. Uh, another option uh, possibility is that your house get damaged um, or that someone sleeps on your porch and they get injured and now what do you do to help this individual? Uh, you can become ill uh, and you may also have an unfortunate case where the illness becomes a uh, dis disability and you require long-term care. And then of course the most unfortunate event is someone dies and there are other people relying on, on the person. So if you damage your car in an accident, you need an auto insurance that's in the property type of insurance. But if you hurt someone in a car accident and you need to pay for the medical care of the person that you, you injure, that is considered a casualty insurance under automobile insurance. So casualty means something that uh, you cause someone else and you need to cover for the damages that you caused um, as a result of the event. Uh, similarly, if your house gets damaged, your homeowner's insurance will cover the damage. Uh, but if someone else is hurt on your property, you need casualty insurance or personal liability insurance that is tied to your homeowner's insurance. Uh, health insurance will cover short-term or uh, one-time illness. Um, and if you require long-term care, long-term care means a nursing home care or skilled nurse care on a long-term basis. So a nurse that come to your house every day or live in nursing home, that's considered long-term care. And then if you become disabled and cannot work and you need supplemental income, that will require disability insurance. And of course, in the case of a life event or death, then it requires the uh, benefits from a life insurance to cover the ex living expenses of your dependents. Now that you have a general idea of the different types of insurance, which we will go into more details later on in this module, now let's take a look at where can you obtain this insurance. Um, insurance are sold by insurance companies through insurance agents. And most consumers deal directly with insurance agents and not the insurance companies. Uh, in fact, um, insurance companies also have two major roles. Um, the first is the underwriting role. A insurance underwriter sets, sets the premium and the details of the contract, meaning what is covered, what is not covered, and for how much and under what condition. The underwriting process is seldom, uh, seldom interact directly with consumers. Um, the second part of insurance company, a second role, is to pay out damages, and those are called uh, claim administration. 
and consumers do interact with claim administrators when they have to file a claim against a policy. So the claim administrators from the insurance companies determines actually how much will get reimbursed to the insurance policy holder if an event does occur. When a consumer is looking to buy insurance policies, they, uh, they will typically work with an agent. Um, there are two main types of insurance agency. One is an independent agent. Independent agent will represent different insurance companies. So when you work with an independent agency, you can choose uh, amongst different types of insurance from different insurance companies. Um, on the other hand, there are exclusive agents that they only work with one company and they sell different policies from a single company. Um, and then there are full service agencies versus limited service agencies. Uh, full service agencies typically have local offices very close to where you live and you can go in person and talk to them and they'll explain to you the um, types of contracts, the benefits, the coverage, and the premium. And if you need to file a claim, you can also go to your insurance agency and that person will help put you in touch with the claim adjusters. So you have a one person that you can go to for all your insurance related questions. Uh, on the other hand, some insurance companies actually sell their policy directly online. And in those cases, you don't have to interact with anybody. Uh, you simply go online, fill, file a form, or fill out a form, and then you can uh, get a quote and you can you can set, uh, you can buy a policy. And if you need to file a claim, oftentimes that is done through online as well. So it really depends on your comfort level, whether or not you want to have someone to talk to, uh, walk you through the process. So remember when something bad does happen, for example, if your house catch on fire, um, that's a stressful time. And whether or not you need someone to help you with that process to file a claim, uh, we'll talk in more details about what is involved in a claim. Uh, and that can be a deciding factor whether or not you want to go with a full service agency or whether or not you're comfortable with an online agency. Finally, most insurance companies offer some kind of discount to groups. Uh, so a lot of people is quite, in fact, it's quite easy to find a group policy that gives you a discount, uh, either through your employer, that will be uh, a, a, uh, a, a, a working company or an employer policy, or you can be the alumni of a university. So any type of group that you belong to, uh, you may find that that provides you uh, a discount. So always ask for group discount policy and see if you qualify. Here are some of the major points to consider when you are deciding on your insurance need and how to incorporate that into your financial plan. Uh, first, like all other financial planning, the first step is to consider your life stage meaning are you uh, young and in the beginning of your career or do you have any dependents? Um, and then the second is income and also how much net worth you have accumulated. So let's take a look at a few examples to decide whether or not you need insurance and how much do you need. So we talk about life stage, income and net worth. So let's say you are a single individual, you have no dependent, and you have no liabilities, you're early in a career, such an individual does not need life insurance because no one is depending on that individual for, uh, for support. Uh, on the other hand, if you're a young parent with a mortgage, then life insurance can be important because you want to be able to support your child even if something bad happened to you. Uh, so it's, uh, that individual would have need for life insurance. The second thing to think about is uh, what kind of policy is appropriate for you. Uh, let's say again, if you are young, look at your life stage and your income. So if you're a young, healthy individual and you have a relatively high income, then you can afford to choose a health insurance policy with a high deductible and low premium. So in that case, if something bad does happen, you can afford to pay for the unfortunate outcome. But if nothing bad happened, then you pay a lower premium. 
And then the last is where and who should you get the insurance from. We talk about that in the last slide. So whether or not you need a full service agency or are you comfortable with an online agency. We're going to pause the video here. In the next video, we're going to go in depth on uh, property insurance and uh, go into more details what type of policy uh, are available, what kind of coverage, and which ones are appropriate for different types of life stages. See you soon.